Hey YouTube, Drone Tech here. It would be nice if we could get through just one day without the arrogant, partisan media blatantly proving that there is no more free press. The fourth estate, for all intents and purposes, is gone. The entire news cycle of Representative Omar's anti-Semitic comments and tweets, you might have noticed that the media has been running cover for and attacking her Republican critics. This is not new, this is a tactic that they always use to deflect any kind of negative news towards their party, the Democrat Party. They took a Democrat scandal and they spun it as a Republican scandal. This is basically what you get when you replace principled journalism with political activism. A great example of this came today from MSNBC host and Fidel Castro supporter Andrea Mitchell. Can you believe that she actually smeared the vice president for, quote, creating a toxic climate simply by criticizing the Democrat for something she's been widely criticized for? I've got to ask you about your tweet from the plane against Congressman Omar. Uh, you read her out. Uh, we understand you want her to be kicked off the Foreign Affairs Committee. At the same time, Republicans were very slow to go and punish Congressman Steve King of Iowa, who is historically uh, critical of Hispanic Americans, and the president's Muslim ban. Can you understand how that creates a climate of toxicity on, in all directions? It's, it's not exactly fringe to be uh, criticizing Rep. Omar. Even the Anti-Defamation League criticized her for denying the Jewish state's right to exist. These people insist that the most pro-Israel president that we've ever had, the first president to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, is somehow an anti-Semite. They like to point to a tweet that Trump made as proof he doesn't like Jewish people, even though Trump's own son is Jewish. Now, that tweet could be construed as anti-Semitic. For one, he retweeted it. It wasn't an original post by him. I think it's very possible that Trump simply didn't catch on to the anti-Semitic angle of the meme that he posted. But even if he did, what proof is there that Trump is anti-Semitic? What policy can you point to and say, hey, that's an anti-Jewish policy? I mean, what statements can you point to? What has he ever even said that could be construed as anti-Jewish? What I'm looking for is his actions. And I haven't even really heard him say anything. But besides that, I haven't seen anything from him that would be construed as negative uh, towards Jewish people. What about Rep. Omar? She doesn't even believe that Israel has a right to exist, which mirrors the position of Hamas, the Palestinian government and terrorist organization. And that means that if she could, she would erase Israel from the map, as well as the people. And that goes way beyond simple criticism of Israel, which I believe is completely legitimate. The difference between Trump and Omar is that Omar is actively working towards harming Jewish people and the Jewish state. In my opinion, this is a person actively showing us that she has a problem with Jewish people and the Jewish state. So we're talking more than words here, actual actions, which kind of makes this whole defense of her by the media even more puzzling. CNN is also playing this game by doing their best to deflect from Omar and redirect people's attention to red herrings that they literally just manufacture out of thin air. For example, CNN's Brooke Baldwin said that Omar has apologized and that's good enough. That? No, I mean, I just, I'm looking here, you know, the double standard. And again, I just get into the fact that, look, isn't the issue Omar and, and recent? We've, we've talked about Trump and what he has said a but zillion it, how times. How is it a double standard? A how is it a double times. standard? Because, he, because the focus is coming is off one. Omar and what she's saying and the but, pressure she's under but, by the Democrats but he to, is to the apologize. One how can we take you past. seriously as someone who's concerned about anti-Semitism if you only criticize anti-Semitism when it's coming from one party? Are you talking about me or yeah, are you talking about you, the president? Yeah, you, you. No, I, I've said there is no logical way that anyone who says something anti-Semitic should not get condemned. However, what about, what should about they Kevin? resign? No. What I don't about, think that, what about I think Kevin McCarthy? But that people should be really outraged by Republican Kevin McCarthy. Why? Quoting Brooke Baldwin, this is clearly an anti-Semitic tweet. We cannot allow Soros, Steyer, and Bloomberg to just buy this election. Get out and vote Republican. Now, you may be asking... What's anti-Semitic about that? There was nothing in there that was anti-Jewish. It was just calling out three people that are funneling millions of dollars into the Democrat candidates. Oh, but all three are Jewish, you see. So that automatically makes it anti-Semitic. Of course, a regular human working brain can figure out that there's nothing anti-Semitic about that. It's just three people that happen to be Jewish. This CNN host, Brooke Baldwin, just declares it anti-Semitic. And case closed. Like, there's no argument to be had against that. It's because these guys are Jewish, it's anti-Semitic to point out that they're spending millions on Democrat candidates? This is insane! Thankfully, though, the guest pushes back on her claim. Let me add to it. Kevin McCarthy. 
Yeah. Uh, around the midterms, he, he tweeted an anti-Semitic trope. He tweeted uh, specifically, we cannot allow Soros, Steyer, Bloomberg to buy this election, get out and vote Republican November 6th, MAGA. He deleted it. He never apologized. If you're going by the same standard, shouldn't, should he no longer be minority no. leader? I don't think that was anti-Semitic. Those were three major liberal fundraisers. La major liberal fundraisers. So they are Jewish off money. Limits. No, no, no. Controlling you mentioned no, the three I, names, look, not yeah. Jewish money. The three names. I think the point is that we, have, right? we, we need to have a consistent standard. So now everything's going to be look, off look, I don't, I'm, Those three are spending tens of millions of dollars. And so is APAC. APAC is also actually APAC spending. APAC does not has spend a, money no, it has associated political action committees. It tells them who to support, and they give money to candidates. And for both. They support Democrats who support Israel and Republicans yes, who support Yes, but they support Israel. policies that Omar opposes. Those three that you mentioned. I don't care what their religion is. That's not the point. The point is they were spending tens of millions of dollars to defeat Republicans. So is that off limits because they no. happen to be Jewish? No, no. It is downright wondrous to me that anybody trusts the media at this point. Watching that clip, it should be plainly obvious to anybody that Brooke Baldwin is doing damage control here for the Democrat Party and for Omar in particular. She is no journalist. She's a Democrat Party operative. She's an activist. Her to accuse the Republican Party of hypocrisy in this case is downright mental. Isn't CNN holding this female Muslim Democrat to the same standards that they hold Republicans to? <laughs> I guess by now it's mostly just Democrats watching and people at airports. If any of you that are watching this now are Democrats and you still believe what CNN tells you, Please explain where I'm going wrong in the comments. I'd really like to know your perspective on this. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and you agree with my message, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find the link here, in the description, or in the pinned comment. Thanks.